Thank you so much, Taiwan uh, uh, Jack. Like it was great being here again. So I love to be in Taipei, but unfortunately, due to the restrictions, I was not able to fly down to uh, Taipei and right now. Hopefully, I will be there next next year. Um, so uh, this just instruction, just little logistics before. So these slides <clears throat> that I'm going to use as part of this session are available there on the Bitly link. I can share that again on the uh, Slack as well for the organizers to share with folks. You can also uh, do a QR code scanning of the slides. Uh, you can get to grab the slide, copy of the slides there. Um, and uh, this is myself. And uh, if you have any questions uh, on this session, um, please do reach out to me on my social handles. I have my Twitter, LinkedIn, and GitHub. You can ping me anywhere you want uh, to learn more about this session or anything else that you want to do for your, your community or your organization or anywhere. I'm happy to do some sessions for you guys as well. So, uh, so this session is, uh, is basically going to be a mixture of a demo. Uh, I have a couple of demos to do. Maybe like that's going to be, a, I should say, a few, few minutes later. Uh, but I want to set the context up uh, why and what this means for this session, right? Um, anytime, uh, if you see a screen drop or something, uh, please do uh, call me out. Uh, I'll make sure that my, my screen is shared always. Uh, in case due to technical glitches, if it's dropped, uh, please do let me know. I'll, I'll bring it back again, all right? All right, so um, let's start this little story, right? So I, I always start with this uh, story when, when I want to talk to people about uh, the, the topic of this session, right? So... Um, I'm a Java developer for quite a long time. Um, um, I was in services and then I came back to consulting and then developer back is here right now. So I'll just rewind back myself. And in fact, uh, this could be a rewind for many of you who are listening to the session. Like we as developers are always wanted to deploy applications, right? Uh, since you are Java developers, I'm a web app fan. I'll just do my app.bar and then deploy to my um, application live application server, right? That's what we are having earlier time before the Kubernetes era, right? And even before Spring Boot era, I should say, like where Java dash jar changed the whole thing, right? So, and I'll be, we'll be working on this, any particular feature. And then we say, okay, uh, on a Friday evening, I go back and tell my ops guy, write some instructions or give him a script or a document or whatever it is. And then say, okay, hey, can you deploy this into production? Okay, that's what happens uh, routinely, right? This is one, at least uh, for me, that was what I was doing for all the time. Uh, when I was when I was doing this uh, in my earlier days of development, right? Typically doing Java applications, right? And I go back and usually we come back on Monday back to work and we see that my application is still trying to deploy. And I got a series of emails from my operation saying, hey, your application is not ready because of so-and-so problem. And from my slide, you could obviously find out what could have been the problem, right? So because when I developed my application, I always did it on, for example, on Windows 7 and then JDK 8, Wildfly 9, MySQL data source, and then set of some configuration, right? But eventually what you see on my screen is that when I deploy that to production, so that production environment is going to be on RHEL, Linux, JDK 8, WebSphere 9, and Oracle database. This completely total opposite of what you've been developing so far when you are on everyday life. And this raised to what I call as a wall of confusion. Right, uh, we dev starts to play ops, ops start to play dev, and eventually, the co core problem here what happened is that an application is not into production on time, right? And this changed a bit, right? When when containers were introduced, right? When containers were introduced, this whole process start to take a transformation, right? Uh, what what I mean by containers that we package everything as a Docker container, uh, we put the guest OS, Java app server, custom configuration dependencies, everything, right? Whatever you see on my earlier screen where I show, okay, this is my development environment, this is my production environment, or this is my test environment. I pack everything into what I call as a container and then package them and deploy them. And this kind of helped a lot of organizations. Right? This was also the time when, when cloud was evolving, right? When cloud was starting to develop and people found, okay, this is quite easy for me to move all my features quickly into production. And they use a very easy strategy called as lift and shift where I take everything together, package everything as a container, and then push it to cloud. And cloud supporting container-based deployment, they were easily able to run it. And for a developer, the everyday command was just doing Docker build and Docker push, basically, which basically pushes your image into the registry, the container registry. And then for an ops guy, it's always going to be Docker run, but it's going to run these containers inside their respective cloud environments anyway. Obviously, they're all scripted, right, end of the day. So this was, this was the way by which people were able to move. And with this, 
we were able to kind of break this wall of confusion, right? This also started the era where we say, okay, DevOps is started to evolve. People are started to use DevOps, right? And with this containers and with this containers based deployment, we were able to kind of say, okay, I'll package and deploy. So there's no more scripts. There's nothing you need to run, my, my dear Hops guy. You just run this Docker run of this particular command. And we are able to push an applications where into production pretty quickly. We we're able to release new features very quickly and all these stuff, which is happening pretty much nicely for us. Right. And we what we landed up right now is going to be what I call as a container native era. So we moved from all of my local based application deployment into what I call as a container native era, where I basically start build and deploy my application using containers. From the day one, I build containers for my application to be deployed. And this, which, which made developers to just do two commands every day, Docker build on Docker push, and the container has everything what you need. I'll show that how it turns out to be for a Java developer when that's the case. And also like for the ops guy, it's always Docker run, right? So it was kind of like, okay, Docker run this container and multiple containers, they talk to each other, exchange APIs, exchange information and all this stuff. Well, this was a case and you're happy kind of moving things up, right? But but eventually this happiness did not last long. Uh, the simple reason is that, so when I started to do this kind of Docker build on Docker push, right? when I started to do a lift and stif- shift strategy of my application, the problem what happened is that the application, if you have a huge monolith kind of an application, that the application was not able to be taken by the uh, containers, right? The problem what happening is that there might be a resource crunch. The monolithic applications might be too fat for the containers. There will be a lot of dependencies and tight coupling, which is which already have in your existing architecture. So what developers did, okay, this is not the old monolith was not the right way for me to do. I mean, obviously, I'm talking about the day when Spring Boot introduced the Java dash jar kind of a concept where we started to run application just using Java dash jar, right? And that's where we started this, where we started to move to monolith to microservices, right? And eventually, as you see on my screen, when I started to do break my monolithic into microservices, right? I have kind of started to distribute the application across, which became eventually what you saw in my screen. Like there is lots of Docker build and Docker push. There's a lot of Docker run that I every operations guy has to run by instance. If you think for a second, right, this is not a scalable uh, thing for uh, for people when you start to run things like this, right? When you deploy my applications, microservices, breakdown, deploy as microservices, but it gets distributed, which increases the complexity. And when you have to do manual Docker runs, kind of they are similar commands. It becomes too uh, it becomes too complex in operational, right? Call us operational complexity, right? Because I have to do all these things myself, right? If something breaks somewhere, I have to go find things about. So, which again put a kind of a block in my faster release cycles, right? Where I want to get features faster into the market for, for the users to use it, right? So even though breaking off monolithic into microservices, uh, I still has some benefits of getting faster to market, but I was not able to reap the benefit of getting faster into market. The simple reason being, there's so much of complexity in everyday command that I do, right? So with the advent of Kubernetes, um, this operational complexity, what I was talking to you about was partially solved uh, because Kubernetes was able to orchestrate your containers, make the containers talk with each other using some service paradigms and all these stuff, which was helpful in a way. But one of the core problems, right? What we need to solve is how do I get my application into production? How do I roll back my uh, thing in case there's an issue, right? All these things has to be done automatically in a cloud-based environment because your things are distributed. So I have to deploy them, I um, mean, kind of independently of each other by click of a button. So that's exactly what people want, right? That's where you get faster at the market. So if you think for us again, this is what continuous integration will do for you, right? The moment I commit a code into my repository, so the application is going to start a build and deploy, right? For, for example, in our case, we are talking about containers here. So when I do a commit and push into my Git or any kind of a VCS, there's going to be a Docker build and Docker push, what we call as a pipeline, a series of steps that's going to run. You will see an example of a pipeline soon. Uh, and then obviously Kubernetes, once it pushes the image into the container registry, Kubernetes is kind of going to take this up and start deploying it wherever you want. In case, even if you want to roll back, Kubernetes has a facility where I can roll back to an older version, right? And everything is there in, in my code, right? It's automated, which means that there is no trouble, there's nobody in between to kind of go and do stuff for us, right? Which technically increased my deployment velocity, right? I was able to go faster to market because click of a button, my pipeline runs, and my application gets deployed into cloud, whichever cloud you want, right? So which is so easy that all these manual Docker build, Docker push, and Docker run kind of a commands were taken out 
So the developers can now start building a Java application, which is just concentrated on how to my build my Java application. And the ops guys need not to worry if they have a Kubernetes cluster kind of a thing or similar platform, not necessarily that, has been set up. And they can just take the containers and run them everywhere using their platform agnostic, right? Platform syntax and semantics that's there. So which is eventually propelled your deployment velocity like anything, right? 3x, 4x, 5x kind of time. But we have to wait and think for a second, right? We have now moved everything into container-based environment, right? My Java application is technically right now running as a container. But when I do that, I need to have a pipeline or I need to have a CI tool which can understand containers, which, which, wills, which gels well with the container, right? I don't want to go back to the same old problem we had when we did a lift and shift, right? Because we just did that, but we found that it was not, the containers were too fat for, for a monolithic application. So similar thing, we want to find and identify a right CI tool that can do this job for me, right? Which should understand what are containers and how containers behave and use the container paradigms to kind of run your pipelines. And that's exactly where drone comes into picture, right? So drone is, is, a, is a container native pipeline. We'll talk more about what's a container native pipeline from harness it's called drone.io if you can go i have all these links on the resources that's where you get your pipelines to run it's a container native pipeline what i mean by container native pipeline okay i'm going to take a deeper look into how it looks like okay but there is an information that i left over on the slides for you about drone and history about drone and eventually drone was acquired by harness in 2020 which is now part of harness platform i also give details about harness at the end of the uh, session as well right Great. So what is a container native pipeline? So obviously, uh, if you used uh, all these cloud-based platforms, right, we have seen a lot of this Travis.yaml, CircleCI.yaml. So eventually, everything is a YAML file that's going to be there. But the simplicity of drone is that so it's going to orchestrate stuff. For example, you see an example here. So I have a kind pipeline, which is going to type Docker, which means that it runs with Docker for desktop, Docker for Windows, or Docker for Linux, or whatever you want. And then it's going to run what is called as a steps, right? I stole a pipeline, it's a sequence of steps. So in this case, you just say, okay, test, Golang build. I'm just saying Golang next example, but I'll show you a Java example as part of my demo. So this is all it required, right? So for this pipeline to run on my machine, I can even run it on my locally on my machine or on a server, anywhere I want, right? And when I translate this YAML, right? This is exactly the Docker commands, a series of Docker commands that, that gets run as you see on my screen, right? Docker volume, create a workspace, mount your sources into the workspace or check out the code if you want and then run, do a Docker run where I'm mounting the source code volume and doing a build and test, right? So this is all is required, right? So if you eventually you don't need a cloud platform basically to do this job. So all I require is a Docker running on my local machine, on my laptop. And if I have a source code that I need to build and test, I just run a simple pipeline like this and that's going to build and test my pipeline and even deploy or do whatever you want. We will talk more about that in a sense. But the overall thing, like you might be wondering what's the differentiator. There are a lot of uh, uh, CI things right now in the market, but what does this does, right? So the, the whole thing I put in a single word is simplicity, right? The drone YAML is all about how simple and how easy for you to run something locally on a machine. So hardly it takes like, I should say when I measured it, like kind of taking 10, 10 milli cores of CPU and then kind of like 10 MB of RAM is what, drone server takes on the whole, which means that I can scale that like anything you want, right? You have multiple jobs to run, but eventually that's also possible to write on a server, allocate the respective memories for your thing. If your job is going to take more memories, it's all container based, which means that how you technically control a container is what you know. The second thing about drone is that uh, the learning curve for you to learn drone is pretty simple because eventually if you see my drone pipeline here, it's going to be a YAML which has a Golang code there, I mean, the image there, which is going to be available in any registry, for example, Docker Hub, and series of commands that I'm going to run, right? And there is nothing big learning curve like other, other tools which might have to learn specific languages, right? So specific scripting languages that I have to learn to, for, for me to actually start writing my pipeline. So the, those are the key differentiators why drone is, is very powerful, right? And also it helps you when you have an heterogeneous team, right? For example, imagine a team which has like, builds a Go code and then does a Selenium browser testing, uses the database, and then, and also uses to deploy things into Google Cloud, right? So if you see all the things put together, right? When a typical environment that I have to do this stuff. So the problem, what happens to me is that, so I have to have all these tools installed locally on my machine for me to do the job. That was a traditional way of doing stuff, right? But with the advent of drone and things like container images and all these things which you talked about, 
it's going to be pretty easy for me because all I require from each team is give me the right container image that I need to use. And that's all I put it on my pipeline and things that's work for me. Right. So which is so easy that when you have an heterogeneous team like this, it's easy for me to kind of go work with them, use a common pipeline to build the tests, build and test the application and put it into production. So if you now imagine the power of continuous integration, how it comes into this, like in case of like earlier days where we are kind of using a traditional way of building and deploying my applications, and it was kind of causing lots of blockades for me, right? When I want to take something faster into the uh, the market, with given the cloud environments that we have, okay? Great, so it's also, <clears throat> I'm sorry. It also helps you to kind of even compress the logic, right? Make the logic reusable in a case. For example, as you see on my screen, I'm kind of, <clears throat> I'm kind of taking two two steps together and say, okay, these two steps can be combined together and I create a container image. Eventually, I'm doing another container image end of the day and then kind of taking this image and then, okay, these are the commands that you have to run. So within your organization, if you're having people, if you want to reuse these things again and again and again, so what you do is like you take all the, abstract all the common logic, put it inside the image, push it into your organization registry, contain registry, and people can start using it. There's nothing going to stop them from using that, right? So in that way is what I call as drone CI world. It's called as a plugin, right? Where I'm going to do plugins is nothing but our Docker containers that perform predefined tasks and are configured as steps in your pipeline. I'm going to talk about a few plugins that I already have, especially for Java, uh, when I show the demos. And plug plugins can be used to deploy code, publish artifacts, do whatever you want, right? Even integrate with the native tools, anything you want. All right. So that's great. So we have a plugins here. For example, I, there's a plugin that I do, which builds an image, a Docker image, and push it to a Docker registry and notifies on Slack. It's an example like for that. All right. I think we talked enough. I just want to get into show a simple demo for that to do here. So let me go back to my screen. So when I talked about plugins, uh, this is what I talk about. So we have a lot of plugins here. Plugins.drone.io is a place where you need to go. So you can go here. I can get a lot of plugins here. For example, I just built a Java plugin. I may have a Java plugin that you can use. Uh, please do use it and let me know your, your comments. Uh, I'm a, I'll show you an example of how to use this. So each plugin, a set of properties, which is basically, I think, with the parameters that you pass to it, right? Um, okay, for I'll show you an example in a second. So and it can configure this plugin in such a way that it can accept these parameters and it can be used to do this job, all right? So uh, so there's a lot of plugins here. So we have plugins for drone. And if you want to have, okay, if you're a Google Cloud user, there's a lot of Google Cloud plugins that you have here to push image into Cloud Run or wherever you want, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're an AWS user, you'd have AWS stuff. There's a lot of other stuff, right? Please do please do explore this. Don't try to create it first. See if it's already there, or you can send us a PR. You are happy to add your plugins to the marketplace as well. So this is a community marketplace, which means that they can send your plugins to us. All right. So as part of this demo, right? Uh, I'm going to have a very simple. I'm just going to open my source code. I'll tell you what I have. Okay. So uh, okay, let's get to some Java code, right? Uh, so this is a very simple. Uh, Java application that you see on my screen. So it's, it's written using Caucus. Uh, so what I basically do is that I just take the, uh, just a greets, but in the case, it's a little bit different greeter where I'm going to use a translation service from Google to kind of send this text, whatever text I'm going to have here. So for example, in this case, it's going to be hello world. So I'm just going to take this hello world and send it to Google Cloud. And then, and then I have a series, I have multiple languages that's going to get translated. For example, as French, Hindi, and I have Chinese here, and then I have Finnish. I just put some random languages, okay? And then it's going to translate in each of these things and then send this translated text back to a Kafka stream. And then that's what's going to be shown to you on a browser using server sent events. So that's a, that's all this old image does. For example, if you go to here, I'm having a stream here where I have a server sent events here. So it's going to do a translation and do this job, okay? To do this, what I'm going to rely on is, is I'm going to use the drone pipeline. This is what I showed you earlier. The step one, I have to clone the sources. I can do it automatically, but for demonstration, I'm just doing it manually here. I'm just going to clone the sources and then step two, I'm using Nexus here to cache my Maven artifacts. So I'm going to check, ensure that my Nexus is there. I'm just going to use it from a Maven mirror URL here. And there you see that I have my drone plugin here, right? Drone Java Maven plugin. And then that has a settings here. Uh, one of the settings is that pass the Maven mirror URL so that my settings.xml is configured. And then I run the goals like I'm skipping test for this demo and then do a clean install. And once the image is ready, 
So I'm just going to do a publish using Docker plugin, uh, which you also saw right there, and then push it into my registry, right? And once that is done, so what I also need to do is like I have a Kubernetes cluster running on my thing. I'm just going to deploy this. I'm, I'm commenting this stuff uh, to run for this demo. The third, the fourth step is basically deploying this to Kubernetes, right? So it's a series of commands that I used to run. As I said, like uh, let's not get into the details of this, considering the time we have. So it installs a Kafka on the cluster and deploys my uh, microservice, uh, which is called as Link Bar Greeter. It's kind of doing this job. All right. So let's do this and see what happens. Okay. Uh, do deploy. Okay. I'll just say K okay, does deploy. Uh, it takes a minute. So I'm, what we can do is while that's done, I'm going to push this into into my drone thing, and then let's go to the the drone dashboard here, and you should see the uh, the build getting started. Right. The K8 has deployed that we gave here. So the only thing is that my publish will take a bit of time, but while we can do this, we can explore the stuff, right? I have a local Gitty here. Uh, since I'm doing a lot of commits and changes, I don't want to use GitHub here. I just use a local Git repository, but the semantics is going to be pretty much same even if you use GitHub, right? It's nothing going to change for you, right? It's just a build and push kind of thing, all right? And then um, I have a Kubernetes environment I told earlier. Let, let's open my terminal and keep it ready. Uh, Okay, I'll just open this up. Uh, I just want to open another one. Uh, I'll just use a better streaming one that I have. I always use. Okay, so uh, CD uh, it. Tabs. Okay, also have another one. Photo. Check a time tab right now. How many more minutes I have? I think I have enough time. I have very few things to show for you. We are almost at the end. So let's see what happens to my build. Perfect. It's doing a deploy uh, to uh, KDS, which is which is our platform. Let's keep watching for that. Let me push this to the side. Okay. And uh, let me have this this side. Okay. Uh, Sorry, just playing with my screen. So it's kind of doing a Helm chart deploy here. It's a Kafka, might take some time. Uh, let's check it here. Uh, okay, key gets pods and apps. Okay, it's still containers getting created. Uh, let's wait for the Kafka to be running. Uh, and then uh, we'll do the port forward to make this demo show you how this actually works for us, all right? So to just to summarize while this happens, to just summarize, right? What I have right now done is as simple as I just committed a code and pushed it. So I'm not worried about my Maven version. I'm not worried about my Kubernetes cluster where it is there. I'm not worried about all these stuff, right? I just wrote my pipeline steps using drone. And the moment I published, the Java build happened. And my application is getting deployed into, into Kubernetes, right? That's what we saw. I think this is the whole stuff is running. And you should also see the container getting created. And let's do a port forward uh, so that you can access the application. And you see all greens there on my left side of my screen. I'm just going to say my them, my apps, and then do a port forward, right? Perfect. And let's go to my browser and then say 8080. Okay, I should see the world greeter coming here. So give it some time because the message has to technically reach into Kafka and come back from Kafka. So let's give for some time for the refresh to happen. And there you go. I get hello world in Korean, and then I should start to get the hello world in multiple different languages, right? Japanese, and then obviously I should get Chinese also I have shown, right? It's in local language uh, uh, in Canada, and I should get it in Tamil, right? So you get in all these languages right now, right? This is what happens, right? I just did the complete stuff, uh, kind of end-to-end -end deployment, right? This is what we need to do when we kind of in a cloud native world, right? For Java application, let me just say, okay, I just need to build my Java application. I don't need to worry about how do I package, deploy, and all these stuff, right? Let, let me give that to the pipeline. The pipeline can do the job for me, right? It's kind of doing this, all this push, right? It's also getting in Chinese right now, and we're good here, right? But if you see, there's a potential problem here. Okay, let me get back to my slides. Okay, uh, while that happens, let's let's do this stuff uh, considering the time we have. 
I'm just going to do one more commit here and I'll come back and explain this stuff a bit later. Uh, I'm just going to comment this one and then kind of roll out a new deployment for you. We're going to build behind the scenes so that like we save some time. So I'm, not, I'm going to talk about GitOps in a second. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to do a preparation of this. I'll come back to this and explain. Uh, let me go and uh, stop this one. Port forward and then say Helm delete. I have start all. Okay. And just stop. Let's stop this. Okay. Delete. Just clean off something just to save some memory. I'll come back to this. Okay. So um, what do you see right now uh, is let's go back to my slides and start the slide show. So we have done the first job, right? Of doing a CI, right? I've taken my job application right from my desktop into a cluster in a cloud right everything in a desktop here for the eventually but you can take it any cloud you want but if you if you think for a second right uh most of us has been doing this stuff again this is my own perception uh perceptions may vary but this is what i found uh when he was trying to develop this demo right so because if you see my uh, drone yaml which is my ci pipeline right I was kind of using CI for CD, right? Deploying to Kubernetes or deploying to any of the container environment or even to a Java application server for that matter. So those are the part of deployment, right? It's not part of integration. The integration is basically when I kind of do a build, I do build test and then integrate, right? Or in the, in the, in the container world, push the image to registry. But in this case, we are mixing the stuff up, right? So because what is eventually will have problems, right? It becomes hard to maintain because there is more scripting is being done. Okay, and then there's a mixing of code and infrastructure. So that's what is being happens right now as well, because we mix code and infrastructure because you just need to build, but you're also adding a place where you do a KDS deploy. It reduces usability because when you want to use to multiple clusters with different set of environments, then this is going to port, right? For example, this drone pipeline, it'll not work when I take it outside my laptop, right? Because I'm so, so tightly coupled to my uh, local Kubernetes environment. And no consistency and it's hard for us to synchronize across multiple clusters. No deployment history. I cannot go back and check my deployment history and there is no credential none. This are few of these constraints could be pretty much common for any continuous integration tool you use when you use that for CD. So then what should I do, right? If you are in a cloud native world, so just jump from CD to use GitOps, right? GitOps is nothing but a version continuous deployment. So that's how they put us, right? So which means that everything in my Git is the source of truth. So everything else is not, right? What our job is that CI's job is to just to build and push container image. CD's job is to just take and deploy it. Just want to quote a, a little thing from Kesley here, the tweet from there. So, so what they mean by GitOps is that stop scripting and start shipping, right? That's what they say, right? Don't script anything. You don't want to script anything for that. Just start shipping and then things get synchronized here, okay? So... So like I'll come back to the advantages in a second. Let's go back and see how I can change this application into a GitOps thing, right? So let me do this. So for example, I just need to do some preparation because I'm using a Google Cloud API behind the scenes. So get ready. What I'm going to do? I'm going to think the changes here. All right. So. And then the build should automatically start here. So let me expand this a bit. So you should see the build starting up right here for you. Perfect. And I have a tool called Argo CD. Argo CD is one of the platforms that is used to do GitOps, right? So if you see there are a bunch of stuff here, I have Nexus here to do my Maven thing. I have drone server running there on Kubernetes cluster. I have a runner which basically builds and an Argo CD image updated. So we'll not get into details of these things because that will be its own session. But just in a sense, that's all the application I'm going to create. I'm going to use my Java application from here and then going to do a continuous deployment using Git, right? That's what it's in the next part of this, right? So let's go and do that stuff. I'm just going to go back to my command line and go here and then say, uh, let me open the readme. So don't worry if you miss the commands. I have all the commands in there, the Git repository. I've added everything to the resources. So you should see them every, every time you there, sir. Let me go and do this one here. I'm going to create these values and then say, okay, you need GitOps. So, so this is going to happen next, obviously. Okay. And then I push this thing into GitOps stuff and then I'm going to create 
this application, right? So this is again a, a Helm chart here for creating this application. Once I go back here, you can see the Lingua Glitter application getting created here. Are they also having a Kafka cluster getting created here? So which means that from my command line or even from my YAMLs, I'm not doing any anything to deploy my uh, commands, right? If you saw the earlier one, let's go back to our old drone YAML where we are mixing CI and CD together. So we had a series of steps, right? For example, if you see the commented ones here, I'm creating a cube application credentials. I'm just using cube config content, exporting, creating namespace, doing lots of stuff, right? Which is technically should not be done as part of your uh, thing, right? What do you order me to say as part of your CI pipeline, right? This should be part of your CD pipeline, right? That's what I'm trying to say here. So we do everything from CD here. We have the application deployed here. You are just waiting for Kafka. And it also gives you the real time status of what happens here, right? Because I'm kind of waiting for my Kafka to be ready, right? It also shows you that my Kafka cluster is getting ready. The, my zookeeper is up. Uh, it gives some time for Kafka to be ready. So once Kafka is up, what I'm basically going to do is like your applications to start running, right? So let's wait for a second. Um, and if there is any questions, probably uh, uh, we can we can we can uh, ask or for me, like, is there any questions that I can take while this happens? Okay, no questions. Obviously, I put my Twitter handle and other stuff, so you can ask my questions there. So uh, let's wait for a few seconds for this to happen. And then typically, you're going to get the same hello world also here, uh, which is going to take time. Uh, let's see if my application is started. And let me refresh apps and see if all are good. OK, so Kafka is ready. My application is still progressing. And let me get an. It's running here. Let me do a port forward again. Okay, port forward. Uh, it's going to be from my demo apps namespace. Go to demo apps. There we go. And obviously, you're going to get the same stuff, right? So, so you should get the same stuff, but from a different namespace right now. And that's what is happening. So, okay, that's where we go. But let's do a scroll change here. So, I'm just going to change here and then say, Thank you for attending my session. That's what I'm going to say. And then I'll just do a git push and I'll get back to my slides in a second. Right. Dude, that's what my commit message. It's a funny commit message, but don't worry. So that's what it's going to do. So we should, while I do this, um, it should also start a new build for us on this thing. Uh, that's about here. So let's see the build and push happens, and then you should see this application getting changed, right? So for now, let me scroll here. It's two minutes, but when you come back after my slides again, you should see this getting uh, moved to a new version because I have a new build, a new image pushed, and obviously my image should also, my message should also change, right? So, so these are the advantage. While that happens, let me go quickly uh, do this. So we are able to deploy faster. You'll see that in a second. Easy for faster recovery. I can roll back any stuff. Easier for credential management because Argo CD and other tools has good credential management thing. You can put it in one place. Your developers, all the developers need not to know about it. Self-documenting deployments and shared knowledge among teams. I know the whole stuff is, is a bit, uh, kind of a lot of things we learned, but I have made sure that I put every link there. So that's what is being run right now. Um, so I have all the sources and documentation here, including the demo repositories that you saw right now, and how do you how do you can run it locally on your machine? Uh, so in, all the commands are documented there, so you can go try it out and ask me questions if you have anything for me to ask questions. And uh, you can also see you can also join us on the Slack Harness Community Slack, where you can talk more about these drone and other stuff that you can do. And we have a lot of events coming up, meet up coming up as well, so you can just join those things as well. Okay. And uh, I should say uh, thank you by now. And then uh, again, you can scan this QR repository to get these repository code and documents and other stuff. If you like my uh, session, I know this is lots and lots you learn in just 40, 45 minutes. Uh, if you like my session, please do tweet it and quote, I mean, uh, tag me on those things. And then I'll be happy to answer your questions also if you have anything there. Okay. So let's go do one last thing. Let's go check if our uh, stuff is deployed. And I hope the build is done. There we go. Just for the time's sake, I'm just going to do a hard refresh. This is technically open automatically. 
but let's do a hard refresh here to see if things goes up and uh, this should still be going on okay uh, that's all i have so if you have any questions uh, for me uh, i'm happy to take that otherwise uh, i should say thank you and goodbye and obviously uh, you can also sign up for a free harness platform whatever i showed right now runs on a local laptop but if you want to do it for a team uh, you can go check at harness iowa we have a free tire where you can we can you can try all the stuff which i showed you right now on the online platform and much more right we have a lot of stuff here as as i pulled it down we have a series of things feature gates service relapse management continuous integration kiosk engineering cloud cost management and much much more right just to register yourself up there and then probably you can also try this platform enterprise as platform which is free there's a community free tier as well uh, you can use that as well all right uh, with that uh, that's that's pretty much end of my session uh, if you don't have any questions uh, back to the organizers and obviously i'm flashing my social handles again if you want to uh, chat with me or ask questions you can pretty much get there thank you so much